Did I predict the August SAT questions correct? In this video, we're going to check how many of the questions that I've predicted in this video actually showed up on the August exam. This is going to be super valuable for those who are going to take the next SATs. So if you're ready, let's get started. In the August SAT predictions video, I predicted 19 questions. And out of those, 9 questions were actually in the exam. This is a 47% of accuracy, and it means if you've solved those questions, if you've watched that video before the August exam, you would have solved 9 questions before even the exam started. That's around 80 to 90 points. Now this isn't luck, it's a mix of strategy, pattern recognition, and years of experience. If you don't want to miss the octave predictions, make sure you watch this video where I reveal the questions that might be on October exam, and also College Board might repeat these questions in this video um, in the next SATs, so make sure you first learn these questions and then do the October predictions. So let's check these questions one by one. I've already solved the August predictions questions in the predictions video, but I will go over the August questions that were on the exam and see the similarities between them. Now here is the question that I predicted and here is the question that actually showed up on the exam. Like look at the similarities. These are literally the same questions with only different numbers. And you might have seen this question on the August exam or you haven't based on different versions of uh, questions on the August test. But if you have, if you have seen this question, just let me know in the comments if you, if you did or not. Now I'm going to solve this question the exact same way that I did in that predictions video. So let's go ahead. We are given a system of linear equation and we are being asked which of these points are is on this system of system so when you look at the system you see that these two lines are the same lines like this is 5x multiplied by 6 30x multiplied by 6 40y multiply 6 48 so these are the same lines you just want to see which one of these points is on one of these lines right just one of them so let's see let's say r is zero we can we're going to make it easier we giving r 0 to r and see which points is going to be here it's going to be the 0 8 over 7 in this point this point is going to be 8 over 7 0 this point is going to be 8 48 this point is going to be again 8 48 right let's see which one of these points is on the system the first one 0 8, 8 over 7 if x 0 y should be 8 over 7 let's check that I'm going to say okay let's plug 0 to x um, so this is by the way let's remove this so it's not uh, confusing here is going to be 0 plus 7y equals 8 so 7y equals 8 y is going to be 8 over 7 right so this point is right let's just keep that let's check the other points if y is 0 x should be 8 over 7 let's check it here is going to be 0, then x is going to be 8 over 5, not 8 over 7. It's not this. This is gone. And if x is 8, y should be 48 on this point. So if x is 8, it's going to be 40 here. And then we move 40 here. So it's going to be negative 40. And here will be negative 32 over 7 going to be y. So it's, it's a negative number, but here is 4 to 8. It's not this. These two are the same, so it's going to be the first, only the choice A is on the system, and the answer is going to be choice A. Now here is the next question that I predicted, and here is the question that was on the August exam. We're going to use Desmos to solve this one. So we have the, an equation, and in the given equation, K is a constant. The equation has exactly one real solution. What is the minimum possible value of 4K? So let's put this equation into the Desmos and see the graph. The square root of k minus x add the slider equals 57 minus x so we don't see any any graph here that's what because we have this equal sign we need to move this 57 minus x to the left side of the equal sign and remove the equal sign everything should be in the one side right so if you move that to the left side it's going to be negative that's the graph right you want this to have only one exactly one real solution means it should cost the x it should cross the x-axis only in one point okay so we're going to as we move this k it's it is the graph is moving so let's just make this hundred move it until we see that the this line crosses the x-axis only in one point okay so let's, let's come here moving this okay 57 it, it it touched the x-axis at two points one is here 56 and 7 one is as 50 57 and 0 right so these are two points it has only two answers here 56 no answer so we can make 56.5 no answer 56.75 there we go 
we got only one 56.5 is going to be k so when when k is 56.5 we have only one solution it cuts the x-axis only in one point and we're being asked what is the 4k so 4 times 56.75 is going to be give us 227 that's the answer now if you haven't watched the desmos mastery course that teaches you every single type of question that you can solve using desmos make sure you join the decide hackers community link in the description to get access to this course let's see the next question if you have solved this question on the august predictions video you would 100% solve this question that was on the August exam. The question says the function g is defined by this where t is a constant. In the xy plane, the graph of y equals g of x passes through this point. What is the value of g of 0? So v, the, the question that I predicted was even harder than this. It had two variables in the function and two points and we had to find those variables. Now, we have only one variable and one point. You need to find t then the function will be completed and we will find g of zero let's go ahead we're gonna plug this point into the function and find t so x is 23 and y is zero based on this point it's going to be zero equals 23 plus 17 times t minus 23 now two numbers this number times this number gives us zero so that means either this number is zero or this number is zero but this one is not zero 23 plus 17 is not zero so this should be zero so when we multiply by that it's going to give us zero t minus 23 equals zero then t is going to be 23 so this is the function g of x equals x plus 17 23 minus x this is the function we're looking for what is the g of zero let's plug zero to x it's going to be 17 times 23 which is going to give us I'm going to use my mind mm, 391. Next predicted question was this one, and there were four different versions of this question in the August exam. You might probably see one of these in your exam. Now I'm going to solve only one of them, but if you want, of course, you can pause the video and solve all four of the questions. The function f gives the value in dollars of a certain piece of equipment after x months of use. If the value of equipment decreases each year by p percent of its value the preceding year, what is the value of p? Okay, so this equipment after x months, so x is in x is in months, all right. But the question says the value of the equipment decreases each year by p percent of its value. So one year is 12 months so x should be 12 here if i plug 12 to x here's going to be 1 and it's going to be 0.28 to the first power which is going to be 0.28 so if the rate is 0.28 that means the amount the percent of decrease was 1 minus 0.28 which is going to be 72 0.72 and if we convert this into percent we multiply by 100 we get 72 percent decrease right it's going to be choice d the next question that i've predicted was this one and there were three other different versions of this question on the august exam and look at the first one like the first question is even the same question with only different numbers so the question was the rectangles a b c d and e f g h are similar the length of each side of e f g h is 10 times the length of corresponding side of a b c d the area of a b c d is 100 square units what is the area in square units of e f g h it's asking for the area and in the uh, video predictions video i've said that area is two-dimensional so we do the unit the the proportion between them should be to the second power if it's volume it's three-dimensional if it's just the the length it's one-dimensional so area is two-dimensional we're going to say okay so the length of each side of efgh is 10 times the length of the corresponding side of abcd so that means the area of the efgh is larger than abcd how much is 100 times the abcd because it's 10 times 10 right the area of abcd is 100 so if the area of abcd is 100 the area of efgh is going to be 100 times 10 times 10 because length times width right so the area that's why the area is two dimensional you look at the formula of the area it's width times length so width is 10 times length is 10 length is 10 times it's going to be 100 times the, for the area and it's going to give us the one that has four zeros it's going to be choice d the next question that i've predicted was a complementary rule question which says 
the sine of theta is equal to cosine of 90 minus theta or vice versa and there were two complementary rule questions in the exam let's solve one of these questions the question says triangle xyz shown is a right triangle which of the following has the same value as sine of x so here is the sine of x here is the sine of x and if here is the sine of x sine of x is equal to according to the complementary rule cosine of 90 minus x right where is 90 minus x here is 90 degrees and we know the 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 sum of all the angles inside the triangle is going to be 180 so the sum of this angle and this angle should be 180 so if this is x this is 90 minus x right so the sine of this is always equal to cosine of this angle, cosine of y. Which choice is says cosine of y? Choice A is the answer. The next question that we predicted right was a probability question. In the question that I predicted, I've emphasized, I've mentioned about the statement given that the person is at least 18 years old. And in the question that was on the exam, the, state, the exact same statement was, the question was, the statement was given that the t-shirt is a flames t-shirt if you've solved this question in the video before your exam you would instantly get this question on your test the question was a bin contains a mixture of t-shirts for two sports teams the table shows the number of t-shirts in the bin classified by size and a sports team one t-shirt from the bin will be selected at random what is the probability of selecting t-shirts that is medium given that the t-shirt is a flames t-shirt so given that this is the the key the statement here so we are selecting random t-shirts from the bin but the t-shirt is a flames t-shirt so we are selecting from these t-shirts this is the total t-shirt that we are selecting so the total is 48 and what we're looking for mediums and medium we have only 24 here so the answer is going to be 24 over 48 the probability is 24 over 48 express your answer as a decimal or fraction not as a person so we're not multi we can we not uh, multiply this by 100 so it will be 24 over 48 or you can simplify this that's the answer now next two questions are copy pasted versions of each other let me know in the comments if you've seen this question like they are the same question for x being positive the function f is defined as follows fx equals 300 percent of x so if we translate this it's going to be fx equals 300 percent of x means 3 x this is a increasing linear this is an increasing linear equation function so that's choice d and the last two question was a triangle question the question says which of the following additional pieces of information is sufficient to prove whether triangle abc is congruent to triangle def and here is the question on the exam in triangle fgh and triangle klm the measure of angle G and L are each 60 degrees. The length of GH and LM are each 34 centimeters. And we have this proportion. Which additional piece of information would be necessary to prove that these triangles, these triangles are congruent? Right? The same question with just slightly different form. G and L are 60 degrees. Okay, so G is 60. L is 60. We have two equal angles. Then GH and LM are 34 centimeters. So these are equal. 34 centimeters now we also have this proportion that says gh over gf equals lm over lk so we know gh and lm are equal so to have this proportion gf and lk should also be equal if we have this proportion and we know these two lengths are equal that says that means gf and lk should also be equal that's what we uh what we can get from this proportion so gf and lk is also equal right so guys this length is equal to this length this length is equal to this length and the angle between them is also equal these three angles are congruent so there is we don't need any additional information to 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 prove that these are congruent the already the information that the question is giving us say that these two triangles um congruent based on two length and the angle between them so it's going to be choice d no additional information is necessary so that's all about the predictions we made i hope you enjoyed the questions and watch the august predictions video before your exam 
so you could make the get the most out of it but if you haven't that's all uh, that's totally okay you can watch the october predictions to and make sure you download those questions make do them before the exam so you can guarantee some more additional points on your test good luck on your exam and see you in the next video Thank you.